when running an application in a serverless environment, you may not store files on the local file system. Instead, all files should be uploaded to a cloud storage system such as AWS S3. Now, this may sound complicated at first, but in short, you just need to ensure that all files get uploaded directly to S3 instead of being uploaded to the Lambda function. Let's see a real life example. Here, in this application being served from my local machine, every time I upload a new image, this image is being uploaded to my backend and then I just refresh the frontend. Let's see how it looks like on the code. Now, code-wise, this feature is actually simple. If we open our dashboard.blade.php, we can see our input from the type file and the name image. And once the user actually changed the image, he needs to click on the save button to actually upload the file to the uh, backend using the profile route. And if we take a look at the profile route, all we are doing is grabbing the image from the request and start that image in our public directory. Now remember, this is the exact thing that you want to avoid when running applications on Vapor. Images or any kind of file should be uploaded directly to S3 and never be uploaded directly to the Lambda function, even though it might work from time to time, it will eventually lead to problems in the future. One of those examples is that if you are uploading a file or an image to the Lambda function directly, that Lambda function may be using a container that may not exist in the future. Another example is that if you are uploading a file or an image directly to the Lambda function, that request may pass through API Gateway and API Gateway has strict limitations concerning the payload size in general, which can be up to 10 megabytes. Therefore, if you want to avoid any kind of issues when working with file uploads, we recommend you to upload all files uh, directly to S3. Now, this may sound complicated at first, but it's really simple. The only thing we need to ensure is that when the user chooses an image and then he clicks on save, we need to first upload the image directly to S3 and then we contact our backend saying where is the location of that image on S3. So let's adjust the code of our application to make it work this way. Now, to get started, the first thing we need to do is install the Laravel Vapor JavaScript package. Next, we need to require this package in our app.js file. The app.js file is located under resources GS app.js file. And you can require the Laravel Vapor package helper uh, and then make it public accessible on the window object. Next, you need now to create a policy to determine if the user can actually upload files to your application. Once you create the policy, you can see its contents on the user policy under app policies and then you need to create a method with the content upload files so you can return a boolean condition that specifies if the user can upload files or not. For today's example, we are going to return through, meaning that the user can upload files all the time. Finally, we need to modify the form behavior so we can upload the file to S3 before giving the path to that file to our backend. So let's do that. Let's open the file within dashboard blade.php and then scroll all the way down to the end of our view and insert a little bit of JavaScript. 
And the first thing we need to do is actually capture the profile form submit event to say that we don't want to actually uh, submit uh, the form to our backend, but instead we want to prevent that from happening. And the first thing we need to do is actually upload the file to uh, S3. And for that, we are going to use the Vapor Store helper. And that's why we have included this helper on the window object. Then the first argument of this Vapor Store helper is the file itself, which using something like jQuery again, we can quickly and easily grab it uh, from the prop image. Next, once the file is uploaded to S3, we can actually grab the response from S3 that contains the key or the path to that image. And then we use something like Axios to actually post uh, to our profile route the key of that image. And it should be it. So let's recap. You, we use a library such as like uh, jQuery to actually prevent the form from being submitted. And first we are going to actually upload the file to S3 and then we actually perform a request to our backend, but not with the image itself, but with the key or the path to that image that is now on S3. And let's also not forget of doing a refresh to the current page once the post request is done. And we can do that by using the object window, location, reload. All right, now that we have our front end working as expected, we need to make sure that our back end is ready as well. So let's visit our web.php file and then scroll all the way down to our profile route. Now, remember, we need to adjust this code because previously we were indeed uploading the entire file to our backend, but now we are just receiving the path of the image we already have uploaded in our front end using our form. So now we just have the key to the temporary path of the image we have uploaded to S3. So the first thing we need to do is ensure that we don't have any file uh, with the name we want to use. And for that, we need to use the storage disk S3 and then delete um, any file that is within the path I want to use. And next, I want to actually grab the key that was provided on the request to copy the file on that path key and put it on the path I want to use, which is uh, auth ID JPEG. And that's it. Uh, let's recap a little bit. So first we ensured that we don't have any file with that name we want to use. And then we copy the content of the temporary file that got uploaded to S3 during our uh, form save submit uh, action. And then we copy that content to uh, the name we actually want to use. All right, as a last step, we also need to configure the S3 disk environment variables locally because we all know that during the deployment, Vapor will prepare a S3 bucket for us. But for our local development, we actually need to create one S3 bucket and we need to configure the environment variables. So let's do that by going to dot M file and then scroll all the way down until I see the AWS credentials. Now, as you can see, I have already configured most of these environment variables, the AWS key ID, AWS access key, and the region. Concerning the AWS bucket, we actually need to create one for our local development. So let's do that by going to our AWS dashboard, and then we go to Amazon S3 service create bucket. Our bucket name can be, for example, uh, development profile images. And then we just need to create the bucket. 
Now, one thing we need to do to ensure we can access and uh, upload images uh, to this bucket from our local development is update the course permissions. When we can do that by clicking on edit on course and then you, you would configure this as you would want but for now I'm gonna just allow almost everything uh, coming to this bucket once you have done this we can now just copy paste the name of the bucket we have created and please keep in mind that we just have modified this .m file because we want to make file uploads from our local machine to S3 in our paper environments, we don't need to actually configure none of those environment variables. The only thing we need to do to ensure file uploads will work on paper environments as well is to actually configure the key storage within your vapor.yaml file. In this case, we can name the bucket uh, just like that, but with the name staging profile images. And with this information, Vapor will configure an AWS S3 bucket for this staging environment. And now that we have our file uploads feature ready to run on serverless environments, let's compile our assets and finally try our feature in our local machine browser. All right, the assets got compiled, so let's go to the browser, click on refresh, and then choose a new image that goes from Nuno to James. Let's click on save. And I just saw that the image got, in fact, uploaded to S3, yet I'm still visualizing the image from the old disk, uh, from the old local uh, storage disk. And I think this is happening because if we go to our dashboard.blade.view.php, I can see that we are still actually uh, using the old storage as source of the image. And we can quickly fix that by using the storage facade <coughs> disk S3 and then creating a URL for the given um, file path. So now if we go back to our browser, we can perform a refresh. And it seems now that we are having a second issue, which is an exclamation mark on the image itself. And this usually comes from the fact that by default, all the files uploaded to S3 are private. And for that reason, we are getting a 403 when we are trying to access publicly to that image in our development bucket. Now, to address this issue, first, when we upload the image, we need to specify that we want this image to be uh, public accessible. Next, we need to go to our development uh, bucket and then specify on the permissions that actually all the files may have uh, or may be publicly accessible. And of course, you might want to tweak these options as you want. Next, we can go to our browser again, hit a refresh, and then we can upload uh, a new image. And this time, let's go from Nuno to Taylor. And of course, without surprise, we can see that finally our feature is working as expected and probably our file uploads are ready for serverless environments. But to make sure, let's deploy this feature to our staging environment by typing vapor deploy staging. Now, while our deployment is being done, remember. The only reason why we have created the AWS bucket using the AWS console is because we wanted to have a bucket for local development. Now, when using Vapor environments, the only thing you need to do to create the bucket in AWS is specify the name of the bucket in your vapor.yaml file. In addition, if you have any questions about uh, file uploads, please refer to our documentation under the second section storage, file uploads. 
in file uploads, you will find all the contents we have discussed on this episode. In addition, if you find the need of having a real persistent file system uh, on your Vapor network, feel free to consult this documentation about mounting a persistent file system. Let's now get back to our terminal and I can see that my deployment is completed. So if we click on the vanity domain and then we perform a login so we can see our dashboard, we can finally try our feature on our vanity domain in, uh, in our environment. So let's click on choose file and let's pass from Nuno to Taylor. Let's click on save. And sure enough, the image from Taylor got uploaded and our file uploads are working on serverless environments. And that's it about file uploads on Vapor.